for us, um, deep learning is it's about being very student centred. Um, it's about teachers facilitating the learning rather than controlling the learning. Um, it's about making the learning very personalised. It needs to be collaborative. Um, it needs to be creative and it needs to be purposeful. When I was appointed here in 2008 as the foundation principal, it gave me a great opportunity to uh, visit schools in other dioceses, particularly in Sydney and Victoria, um, do a lot of research. YouTube became my friend, um, looking at um, what was happening in um, countries overseas as far as um, education systems, um, particularly in, in Finland and, and the other Scandinavian countries. Uh, and from there, I guess, um, I thought this is a great opportunity to do something different. We, we very much went from an inquiry approach um, to learning. So it was um, based on, I guess, um, how we thought that children would learn best. And we thought children learn best by talking with each other. We identified uh, at the end of 2008 with our teaching team, what we saw as the principles of teaching and learning that would underpin uh, how our learners could be successful. And I think that inquiry approach definitely is something that uh, underpins that. And as I said, um, when we talk about the design thinking process, um, that really has given us a, a much better structure to what we were doing in the initial couple of years when we started in 2009. So you'll find when you visit our learning areas um, that the whole cohort um, is in a learning area together and the teachers team teach. And the children, because they're not in um, separate classrooms and they work together as a year level, um, they learn um, to um, resolve lots of conflict. They will learn to work collaboratively with all sorts of um, different personalities and children with different interests um, and yet eliminates that competition. The learning space is, we designed as being very flexible. Uh, as again, some of the research that I had done was moving away from every student having their own desk and their own chair. Uh, our children need to be able to move around. So our learning spaces were very much uh, designed to be very flexible, uh, things on wheels so they can be easily moved around. Uh, different types of um, furnishings. I know when we first opened here in Channel 7 did a, uh, a, um, a little commentary on it and the um, reporter, journalist, uh, spoke about uh, here at Star of the Sea where all the classrooms look like lounge rooms. And at the time I thought, that was a bit of an odd thing to say, and then I started to think, well, no, that was a, actually quite a compliment because it, it's, it gave very much the impression that, you know, they are learning in a relaxed, um, happy uh, environment. So we found that even um, we've diminished, um, I suppose, the costs in, in budget by being able to uh, have one smart board to the learning area. Um, we have mobile devices in every one of the learning areas. We've started this year a BYOD program uh, in our year five, six area, which is proving to be very successful. So, you know, all those sorts of things that technology is very uh, an integral part of our learning environment as well. But I think that the fact that it's very flexible, uh, that things can be moved around, enables that creativity um, in the children to really shine. What I have noticed about the children when they're working together in groups or in, with partners is that they're very focused, they're very engaged, uh, they really are keen to share ideas, that they're really um, really enjoying what they're doing. We see a lot of talk. We really see their oral language developing uh, extremely well. We see them engaged, they're uh, keen to share ideas, to um, listen to each other's opinions, to share different perspectives and uh, come up with a really good um, uh, demonstration of, of what their learning is. I think sometimes as teachers in the, in the past we underestimate what our, our children are, are capable of, uh, what their knowledge is, um, their eagerness to want to explore, um, to find out more about how the world works. We work on their strengths and they acknowledge what their strengths are. So during the course of the year they get lots of opportunities to meet with me and, and um, I give them feedback and um, they gain feedback from each other. We have also uh, embark on regularly learning walks and talks, so giving feedback to um, the teaching teams by meeting with students and talking to the students about uh, a focus. We've had uh, this term a focus on goal setting 
So looking at how uh, teachers work with children to set goals to progress their learning. Uh, we've also had um, uh, a session on um, um, learning intentions and success criteria. So the teachers actually are having to work with each other to plan what the learning intention is going to be for each of the sessions during the course of the day and course of the week and then articulating that with the children so they're very very clear too and that's very visual as well what the learning intentions are for uh, that activity or for that session and then what the success criteria will be so it's very transparent so the children the students know themselves what it is that they are what the intention of the learning is going to be and then how they will know that they have been successful in that learning. We do it from prep, so they're very uh, uh, comfortable uh, with it. We have had a number of visitors here over the past few years, and that's one of the things that they do notice when they go into the learning areas themselves and start to have conversations with the children, is how articulate that they are, uh, how they can articulate what they're learning, how they're learning, and they can articulate what they need to do to be able to progress even further in their learning. Working with the parents is always a challenge, particularly something where it's uh, different to what they're used to from their, uh, uh, their own schooling and particularly from the schools around the area. So that has been a challenge for me. Uh, we have uh, undertaken some parent education, uh, need to do more parent education. They think, I think, that sometimes that the learning areas uh, the children can do what they what they want, that it's a bit disorganised, but it needs to be even more organised in a traditional classroom when you have, uh, you know, 40 or 45 children uh, in a learning space with uh, two teachers and our support staff. The, the children do have a lot of autonomy, uh, particularly in the direction they want to take their learning. Uh, after the teachers have given them uh, the the content, that they require. They tend to come up with different questions. We talk about um, what's Googleable and what's not Googleable. Uh, so the Googleable um, things are the things that children would be able to find out about the topic uh, or the area of study that they're um, learning about. And then the non-Googleable are the things that you, they, you just can't find out about from Google. Google. So they're looking at the, um, the higher order thinking again. So you look at the children come up with some really, really interesting questions. And I think that's where you, they really appreciate the autonomy that they are given to be able to take their learning on a pathway which is of great interest to them. And that's where I think I see the, the engagement from the students, that they are really motivated because they are directing some of that learning themselves and they're taking it, on a, 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 taking it down a path of interest to them rather than just being um, told what it is that they will be learning about. Reaching out to the community, I think uh, we do very well when it comes to the project-based learning that the students undertake as far as um, you know, the local newspapers, local, uh, the parish community, local community groups, when we, as I said, it's, it's uh, project-based learning, so we tend to try and find some way of directing their learning so that it can be communicated and celebrated in the wider community. So from that point of view, I think we get um, a great connection with the wider community. I think there still needs to be uh, work done around um, uh, educating people in the community that what we do here is um, uh, do, it does work is is effective because I think there there's probably still is a little bit in this community which is quite traditional and quite conservative that what we are doing here um, is a little bit um, too innovative. A, a delight for me is to see the um, and hear the passion that teachers have. I mean, I guess, as I said earlier, I've worked in, in uh, education now for nearly 40 years and to hear teachers over the years that, uh, you know, the problem is with the students or the problem is with uh, curriculum change or educational reform or um, we're doing this because, we're, you know, we're told to by the system, that the teachers here are passionate about what they do. Uh, they enjoy working with each other. Uh, and you can see that in a, in a daily basis, um, that, they, um, that they see a lot of um, benefit in the way that we work with the children because they can see how motivated the children um, become and how engaged they become in their learning. And the, 
when we, uh, when we first started talking about discovery learning uh, here about five, six years ago, uh, even from the parents' perspective, it would be like the children, the absenteeism um, rate was way down because parents were saying to us children wanted to come to school because um, they didn't want to miss out on discovery. You know, so it was just, it was exciting to hear that the children were going home and talking about it and using that language, which is what we were um, using here amongst the staff. So that common language, uh, that shared purpose of what we do um, is really something I think that um, we, we do celebrate and we need to celebrate even more.